I have over 16 years of experience in marketing, branding, sales and innovation. Uh, last f- uh, 14 years I was in the industry and last three years I have started my own independent strategy consulting business. So I'm going to do two things. One is based on my experience, my own career and professional experience, I've learned certain things. Number two, I've also observed, learned from other people also. And I'm going to share those things. Number three, the most interesting aspect is I'm going to use all these marketing, branding and innovation principles on the career growth and professional growth element. So when I advise clients as to how they can grow their business, how to innovate their business, what are the things that act as a stumbling block to grow their business, I found one thing which is very fascinating. It's very universal in nature. So it can be applied for career and profession also. So that's the fundamental premise of this whole session. So now if you ask me, I've started my career way back in 1998, a small story about me to set some context. Okay, 1998, I've graduated from uh, a college called TUK Arts College, which it's in a uh, semi-urban place called Tanjavu in Tamil Nadu. Uh, so once after I completed my graduation, uh, I was very vague. Uh, because uh, that part of uh, Tamil Nadu didn't have much access to uh, the growth of a career. It's a very small place, but it's it was a growing, thriving place, but known for agriculture. So what I did is during the initial stage of my career, I worked there at uh, at a at an NAIT center as a sales executive. I kickstarted my career as a sales executive there, and then I. I had launched my own small business called Kitchas Puppet. It's a puppet business where we uh, manufactured puppet at our home and me and my friend distributed the puppet in and around the areas, maybe 20-25 kilometers. We did really well. We did up to 50, 50 to 60,000 per month, I mean in 1999, but, but, but my friend unfortunately passed away. So eventually I had to shut down that business and then I moved into another, uh, I worked for another distributor firm where with the help of my TVS 50, I go and distribute FMCG products in the in the nearby villages of my town. So um, I was always striving to grow. So I thought I need to improve my communication skills and improve my sales and marketing skills. So I thought I need to move away from that place uh, came down here to Chennai 18, 19 years back uh, and joined an international call center primarily to hone uh, my communication skills and sales skills. You know, in call center those days, they give you, they, they put you on, under severe fancy training, voice and communication training. And then I've, I've evolved and then I eventually uh, worked there for two, three years and then came into real estate. Um, what there as a head marketing. I, I, I was in real estate for seven years, but until the age of um, 33, I was not able to figure out exactly what I need to do in my career. I was doing things very randomly, very randomly without any clear goal in my mind. After that, uh, when I did my executive management program in IIM at Lucknow, Uh, It's a one-year program, which I did in 2013. Uh, That that entire one year was a, I would say that period as an epiphany moment in my whole career. So I came uh, as a patch topper in that uh, one-year program. And at the end of the program, I realized something. Marketing is my, marketing sales and branding uh, is my ikigai, as they say. So... Post which uh, I've launched my book. Uh, I've uh, I went ahead and did keynote sessions on various business conferences. I met various entrepreneurs. I've launched my own thought leadership brand. So all these things happened once I realized my uh, strengths in my my innate talents, the thing that came very naturally to me. 
so now i'm i'm still learning i'm 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 naturally a learner so this is how i evolved in my career so what i have learned in this entire one minute i'm just trying to move my slides what i have learned certain things is at a conceptual level during this entire period i happened to meet a lot of um my colleagues entrepreneurs founders even during the last 4 years i met a lot of people um a lot of founders and entrepreneurs for their consulting business heads so i jotted down certain things and in fact i i went to consult them train them motivate them and on the on the other hand i also learned a lot of things so the number one concept which i wanted to share with you is at a broad level you could be working inside a company could be an entrepreneur founder any type of career i mean it's not just working inside a company when we study the history of uh, people who have achieved breakthrough success in their career they have used certain vehicles so let me explain you it's it's an analogy so if we want to move from one place to another place we need a vehicle right so we can go by walk but i mean either it could be let's take car as an example you can have two types of vehicles one is you can own your own car or you can even use a rented car to go to that place so even in career the same analogy can be applied so let me go and share certain examples these are just examples uh, i i may share some high high profile people but don't get jittery so uh, about it the reason for me to share all these profiles is to have some type of archetype in your mind just as an example to build your career there is one there is no one clear route to career path that's the plus and minus so this gentleman is is quite famous his name is mr chandra he is a uh, is a current chairman of tata sons he is entire career is with tcs tata consultancy services right from day 1 he's been with tata so he started as a software person then moved on to certain various various roles inside tata then eventually took over as a ceo of tata consult tcs tata consultancy services that he did really well took tcs to the next level eventually now he is the chairman of the entire tata group of companies one company entire career so for him tcs tata group is a rented vehicle i'm just trying to link this with the concept don't get uh, don't um, uh, go by this word literally for him he has driven on top of one single company proved his worth trustworthy for that one company to grow his career kunal shah you must be knowing about him he's very famous uh um, uh founder of uh, the brand called cred we all know him right so he dropped out uh from um from his mba he, but he launched uh, a very famous brand called cred he's he's a founder driven he for for him cred is his own vehicle he, he has launched his own brand sundar piche we all know him right so he's very famous but if you look at his career he traveled on top of certain trends number 1 he has traveled on on top of the trend called android we all know that number 2 he has traveled on top of a company which has changed the search and advertising industry google number 3 he is also a talented person the reason why i am sharing all these archetypes is because we may think that we are highly talented but if we don't understand on what trends we ride on what company we ride or our career could be even as a rented vehicle this gentleman uh is not is not an entrepreneur he is not a founder he has not founded anything on his own but he is leveraged on certain trends on top of a world's uh at that point of time when he joined google was still a growing company they were doing really well on search he 
he convinced the founders larry page and became the ceo of the company now the ceo of the entire um, alphabet the group so rented vehicle when he say rented vehicle it, rented vehicle can it's not just a company take this gentleman as an example you could even sense something in in your environment for for him it's android any new technology which you can leverage and travel on top of the com- on top of the trend that that trend maybe even a company can uh, use that trend you don't have to invent or found a new company we all think that as we, we all overrate entrepreneurs and underrate people who are working inside a company right so if you if you are passionate about founding a company passionate about being an entrepreneur no problem if you can't you still can grow massively in your career that's what that's why i i have introduced this own vehicle and rented vehicle concept miss sharma we all know her right very famous beyond beyond news palki sharma so she has done her journalism uh and she has grown in that same career path used media as a vehicle to to gain prominence to share her voice to the world so rented vehicle on top of a company ankur wariko started his own venture we all know ankur wariko right nearby own venture then moved on to become uh, a content creator and influencer now he is he is he has his own courses uh he do keynote sessions for corporates see how different these people's careers are that's why there is no fixed format or slate but we need to have certain role models or certain character archetypes so that we can try to relate or emulate them based on our own unique talents that's very very important i'm i'm coming to that point later Sangeeta Sankaran Shumesh is my close friend. She worked as a chief uh, finance officer for uh, for a company called Dun and Bradstreet and at the later stage of her career she has, she has launched her own book. Currently she's um, she's she's a business performance coach and a keynote speaker. For her her books and concepts are her own vehicle. So if if you see your own vehicle it could be your own company your own business idea that can be converted as a company number 2 even if you are if you are a highly qualified thought leader or an or an intelligent person you can come up with certain concepts frameworks ideas for example philip kotler's four p's of marketing he owns right it, it's his own vehicle so for a for um a lot of people right so even uh in today's influencers they use youtube as a vehicle it's a rented vehicle and it's their own platform also so they are they are traveling on top of both a rented vehicle and they have built their own vehicle as a uh, used youtube as a vehicle to build their influencer brand and they making huge money so today what i'm trying to say is the career options for an individual is not restricted it's not that is no standard rules we may assume that there is a linear path to a career but it's always zigzag people change at any point of time some people have started very early and they became successful some people have pivoted and became successful in their career so we need to have these two things in our mind on if you are working on a company that's our rented vehicle and if you are launching our own business it's our own vehicle but on top of it it's very important to see on what type of trend we are traveling so we we can even think like a value investor uh a venture capitalist when we try to build a career reverse engineer the thinking how we see the market as a professional if you if you see the environment what are the trends that can be leveraged today what are the things that are becoming familiar it could be tech it's not just always tech we give we over emphasize tech right so yes even if you take tech you have artificial intelligence uh, coming up uh, metaverse coming up analytics coming up a lot of other things these are some of the things that i know but even uh, at, at a very conventional 
way if you take, take teaching as a professional how, how you integrate tech and teaching that's what we call as edu, edu tech right so everything can be combined in technology and you as a we as a career professionals we need to be highly aware of the external conditions and try to use that either as a own vehicle as a rented vehicle so market potential if you notice that trend we need to know a slight estimation of the market potential of an of that particular trend or an invest industry how if you are looking for a job inside a company another way to look at it as a value investor or a venture capitalist is to see how this company is positioned in that particular trend or in the industry think like warren buffett yeah so warren buffett also looks for quality of leadership team you you study the, you you may not do a, you, as a career growth professional you may not be able to fully study the quality of leadership from a from a qualitative standpoint when i say qualitative standpoint the characteristics their attitude and all those things we will experience once after we get into the company but even sitting inside the company we have to keep in keep in mind these things and the most important aspect is the scope and growth potential of your role inside the company inside the industry and how you are leveraging the overall trend i'm just sharing things at a very high level i am not getting into any one particular skill or industry i'm just sharing with you some frameworks and mental models which can be leveraged across multiple disciplines in in your career so another most important concept which uh, determines uh, the success of a startup is this product market fit but how can you use this in your career or professional growth we just need to see the industries companies trends that match our talent and our potential it's an intersection of we, we uh, before that i wanted to tell you one thing you and me are the product the industry the trend companies all those things come under the market side of this equation product market fit equation any venture becomes successful only after it achieves the product market fit and investors bet on that company when they see a product market fit it's it's, it's a very fundamental thing in determining the success of a venture right similar to that how the product market fit element can come into our career also we need to deeply think about these things maybe the companies that match our talent the trends that match our talent not that uh, we may not have a skill at this point of time to drive to to leverage an ongoing trend but can we upskill and leverage that trend do we have that capability one mistake which i did in my career is in 1998 19 uh, that during that period 2000 uh, the the dot com trend period the software courses were very famous launched by nit aptech due to social pressure i went ahead and took one year course in a in a big uh, software learning company eventually i failed because i am not a coding person i'm i'm uh, i don't know how to write coding or software i don't know what uh, oops or c++ and all those things were but due to this peer pressure since i saw something this industry is, uh, is growing like anything i forced my father and did did that course but at the end of the course i, was, I came out as a failure even the external trend can be something which is growing fast or it could be highly potential am i capable of doing that is it there is that a fit within my natural talent and that external trend is another key question which need we, we need to ask these are some of the tough things i i really i really understand because there is a huge amount of noise outside us right so we need to sit 
and meditate and understand our innate talents which is nothing but your core dna who we are as a person who we are as a person the entire the, i told you right till the age of 33 i've struggled like anything because i really don't know who am i what are my natural and innate talents today when i when i realize i i could chat certain things i'm a creative thinker um i i learn a lot i study a lot um the, uh, this can be um highly useful in marketing so i i i'm primarily driven by ideas concepts principles so off late after um, my i am lucknow executive education program i've leveraged all those things i've uh, asked my close circle friends i did the next exercise which i've learned from my mentors called strength finder exercise the problem is people don't come and share our strengths directly with you they appreciate us but not right in front of us it's always third party appreciation so it's very important to understand our strengths particularly from our close it could from our peer circle uh people or, or reporting managers colleagues we need to definitely do the strength finder exercise at any point of time to understand our natural and innate talents it means understanding our core dna it's it's when when we advise brands this is what we try to do to the founders and entrepreneurs what's there inside what are your belief systems what what's driving you these are the components of a brand right so when it comes to brand strategy i mean purely from a business standpoint at the center if you, if you draw a circle a big circle at the center of the circle is your belief system the brand's belief system the external another layer if you draw it's all about the character attitude and the external aspect is the identity your external appearance so even for us as individuals the same thing applies our own belief system our career and our external appearance when i say external appearance i don't literally mean uh, our face i mean how we communicate how we show up how we are helpful to others all these things form the external appearance so this is what we need to keep in mind so another unique thing which you which we all need to keep in mind see today if you go and apply for a job or um, try to apply for a funding for a for your company everyone that is that is a queue everywhere right everywhere if you take a job almost 300 400 people apply for a job if you go on top of the pyramid it even becomes difficult i mean your head of certain company head of strategy head of marketing head of sales or because it's like a pyramid right on the top it's, it's the size is very small it it forces you to ask certain questions and one such thing which i have learned is you we need to identify our own genius zone so what what do i mean by that see let let me give you one example you are a football player football naturally comes to you let's let's keep this as an example and on or uh, during your mba you did you specialized in marketing okay so which industry will fit for you maybe you can even try to club these two things since you are extremely passionate about football or maybe cricket or any any sport for that matter if you combine marketing you become a very unique professional in a sports industry because inside the sports industry you know about what sports is all about because you are passionate about it you can learn a lot of things very quickly and then you already are are adding marketing as a skill and knowledge to you you become a powerful profession so we need to combine two different things if you are a data person purely number driven person how can you combine marketing in that how can you combine psychology in that behavioral science in that two different things if you combine you become a, you become a genius in that space 
for me if you ask i told you right i am a creative storyteller i am collaborating with a um, cart- with a cartoonist to do some cartoon initiatives i am even working with my son he is a movie production is he is trying to become a movie director i am learning a lot of movie and storytelling uh, principles and trying to incorporate that in marketing another thing which i am doing is i am trying to combine behavioral science in marketing behavioral science is is all about understanding what drives us as humans right so for marketing it's very very important so i am i am learning lot of things from behavioral science and bringing that to the marketing so what are some of the what are two different things you can combine to build your genius zone maybe from your own experience like if you're a if you're a singer or a musician what another skill you can add and make it a, 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 a different kind of profession a unique it, it it will it will show as if you are a very unique person in that industry so that's that's the reason why you need to build your own genius zone so here comes uh, the seven p's of marketing so in marketing there are two frame for broad frameworks right four p's of marketing and seven p's of marketing seven p's of marketing is for services company services companies so you and me are professionals we are in service business right so another way to look at our career is to think that we are in the service business and particularly we are in a b2b business we are serving only one company that's the only difference right so don't we need to even if we are we work inside a company we we need to think like an entrepreneur that's that's when we start thinking different and build our personal brand become influential in our industry maybe that that may lead it lead us to different uh, ventures or different routes altogether in our career so the first p in marketing is the product it means we are the product our talent skills and knowledge are the product i have recently read a very famous quote from jeff bezos he says there are two ways to approach your business one is spend 20 percentage on improving your product and service do 80 percentage of the shouting or spend 80 percentage of your time and energy on improving your product and service and very less time on shouting because when you do when you're remarkable in whatever you do that 20 person happens by word of mouth we don't have to focus there heavily right so today the world is driven by 80 person shouting all these social media and all those things we are forced to propagate and shout rather than doing a real work right so i am not against social media anyways we need to use that that's another rented vehicle for us to build our career particularly platforms like linkedin so coming back to this framework product is very very important our talent skills and knowledge number 2 the second important component of marketing is price the value which the market is willing to pay for us place where we provide the service our service professional service it could be a industry i have shared with you a framework right thinking like an investor which trend we are going to leverage which company we are going to uh we are going to uh, play our game which company we are going to join which industry sorry the frame the structure will be the trend industry company and then function and all those things this is the uh, hierarchy and then most importantly geography also plays a very important role in service delivery where your skills and knowledge and talent has huge demand in terms of geography in certain locality you may not be an ideal fit i mean geography if you are in chennai certain industries if if you can take chennai as an example it has huge car manufacturing facilities if if you are an engineer wants to build a career in car manufacturing this is an ideal place bangalore hub for startups even for tech firms mumbai financial services singapore financial services 
and silicon valley so you place is also very very important you need to be strategic because uh, you you need to we need to understand one thing very clearly we are basically we were told to do the hard work right so how about thinking the luck element luck element if you ask me let's take sundar pichai as an example how many P- sundar pichai S- people like sundar pichai how many people are there but how this gentleman has used that luck element android was growing google was growing he's riding on top of the company and is becoming a he has become a top paid uh, ceo in the world i am not demeaning his skill knowledge or talent no we need to understand the luck element which is nothing but the trend industry and company we cannot change these things too often you cannot join a company and leave the company in a week's time maybe at least 6 months to years time you will be spending that company how about choosing that company or ch- on top of it choosing the industry on top of it choosing a trend you will be riding like you, you will have a huge uh, tailwind in your career right so otherwise we will be struggling we will be forced to think very conventionally hard work lot of professionals i know lot of founder when i consult companies lot of companies i know they are fighting against the trend they are fighting against the um uh, it's like a headwind you have something blocking in front of you because you are not found the product market fit you are not traveling on the right trend placing ourselves on the right trend so next comes the promotional aspect the fourth aspect promotion promotion is very very important for brands but when it comes to professionals like us how do we market ourselves is very very important maybe communicating our value proposition uh telling a story so we we all use resumes right so how to build a different value proposition think of think of your resume and profile as a value proposition not just some rant filling up some random words inside it i have few insights there as well and then from self promotion how do we build our profile connections and all those things people very important or community if you go to a com- if if you work in a community we work along with other people right so any any movement which takes place in a career it comes primarily through people connections we build in our career so classic example of how people component can help uh in building a powerful uh sorry in building a successful profession when it comes to people i would urge you to think of one concept called building weak ties building relationship not just with people who are working inside our company or inside the industry we ties are nothing but people who, who we do not meet day in and day out day out okay most of the critical information for career growth lies with people who are far away from us who are very far away from us so we need to make it as a habit that's why all these platforms linkedin can be useful to build deliberately build weak ties so that when you think of a career move when you the day when you decide to move your career should be very very easy it should be planned when you have lot of weak ties people outside your company people in other companies not just the biggest mistake we build is we build our network only inside our industry if you are in real estate you build your community or network only inside real estate it's good yeah we need to thrive inside the industry 80% of our time can be devoted to network inside the industry but strategically spend 10 15 times on build weak ties people they will not be helpful this week or next next month but when you try to do a, a dramatic shift maybe changing a shift in a industry these people will come in handy maybe if you're if you're building a company these people could be your co-founders uh, these people could be your potential investors in the future for your company these people have critical knowledge i mean people who are far away from us and then physical evidence the way we present for a retail brand for a service brand 
the the if you are entering into a hotel the ambience of the hotel is very very important right so that's why it is there the seven p's of marketing but for us how we present ourselves the way we communicate the way we dress the way we approach people is very very important and final element is the process the process and product is interlinked for a service company the product is very intangible right you have when, when you go to a restaurant yes you have food and another component which is involved is the process the service so you need to understand what process you use to deliver your skills talent and knowledge do you have a unique methodology a framework or structure which you have learned that can be applied to grow a business when i say to grow a business to serve your clients to serve the companies so these are the seven p's of marketing that can be leveraged so when it comes to brand strategy what we advise to companies what companies do is they ask these critical questions the key component of a brand strategy is to ask one important question question how different are you why should people buy your product visa we the competition in the car, in the industry the same question applies to us why should a recruiter read through our whole resume why should her amongst all the 400 500 resumes she get why should she dial her take her phone dial our number and call us why should a ceo or a functional head spend some time with us these are preliminary questions next why should a company hire if they have 10 15 candidates why should they hire us what unique proposition differentiation Uh, the the z that's why that's why i've shared with you the genius zone aspect right these are some of the tough questions we need to ask ourselves next most important thing we need to see our experience as a story so when we meet a person um, everyone likes a story that's why companies that tells emotional stories like nike coca cola even cred A lot of companies, even they they operate in a commoditized market, they win through primarily through emotions, right? So see whatever you come across in your you have, you have come across in your whole career, try to narrate that as a story. Your resume or our LinkedIn profile can be functional, but when we meet a person, we need to tell them a story. it shouldn't be like an interview it should be like a storytelling session so that's when you leverage your um, personal brand through stories so another important aspect is building the perceived value a lot of people who i know even brands companies do this mistake they focus on real value they think that if i have a great product success is for sure and as candid as as professionals we think if we are if we have good skill sets talents and experience we succeed no because we how we showcase because people uh, everything is driven by perception right so that's why that's why i've created this model called or, or a mental model called called your perceived value is more important than the real value so how do you create a perceived value in your profile or when when you tell a powerful story about yourself we, we can present these things what problems we have solved in the past for companies that can be there in their in our testimonials another important social proof which we generally ask uh communi- communication professionals usually use in websites and all these communications is user testimonials and use cases and case studies why not a professional can have a case study about the problems he solved a testimonial in this uh from his managers or from from his, from the companies which he has consulted from pro bono efforts how about getting testimonials and adding it into your profile this will make this will be, act like a proof this will increase our perceived value number 2 another credibility indicator most of the pr professionals use this it's a pr secret what are the industry associations you have tied up with 
maybe if you are a marketing professional are you with american marketing association indian product marketing associations all these industry associations has to add real value to you yeah that's one side but it adds immense perceived value if you are associated with an industry uh, with an association related to your career you are perceived you are perceived i am not saying it's real you are perceived as a expert as an authority are, are we using this in our care profile or resume schools or certifications from top schools yes it's it's good and bad if you ask me if you if you are not from a well known b school or you have not done any certifications from a b school big b school you don't have to worry about it but if you have done you can mention it irrespective of the arguments which happen in social media uh should b schools or top schools given high level of importance still its value we need to understand because of this one simple thing social proof we humans the truth is there is some amount of irrationality in us we value big brands so if you are doing some course or any form of association with top schools use that as a social proof side projects have you consult do, did pro bono consulting to startups or you start doing all those things intentionally as a side project and use it in your profile it adds more social proof because you have done some real work for real companies so these are some of the things which can be used as a these things are done and tested in marketing in companies if you go to any company or website this is not new but can we we can leverage these things as career professionals another important concept which i wanted to share is hands off growth matrix there are four ways to grow any business if you notice at the bottom of the pyramid market penetration and i have i've taken away i i've given used the analogy of product and market product is our own skill and experience the market is the industry which is on the left side and the bottom is the product product market fit is what i shared right if you use market penetration as a strategy to grow your profession you use your existing skills and knowledge and grow in the same industry if you are in saas if you are if you are in sales you grow in sales and in saas industry i'm just giving this as an example another way to grow market development use your existing skill and knowledge to enter into a new industry use your sales skill to enter into from saas to another adjacent industry okay so that's another way of growing this is how businesses also grow so another way of growing is develop new products as in for career professionals develop new skills and knowledge for your existing skills existing industry for example if you are in sales in saas industry working in a company learn social selling uh, like linkedin is promoting this idea of social selling right learn social selling learn marketing if you feel that you want to grow you can add some skills which is adjacent to it how about learning data analytics and use it in sales i have shared about genius zone right it means product development new skills and knowledge for the same existing industry another one is a bit of risky route even for companies developing new skills for a new industry you, you saas sales you start doing finance for hospitality business it's risky right so but you, you but the fourth one is least preferable but use this because hands of growth matrix if you are an mba student this is a very famous framework i have tried to use this for professionals also three important aspects market penetration market development product development so some other interesting aspects i'll just finish off in just 5 minutes time so some people may be may be successful right from the early age of their career but some people may do well once after they evolve like these two famous sports personalities tiger woods eventually his father decided very early in his life he, when he was a kid his father decided he's born to play golf 
he, he identified that and he is right and he picked up golf skills very very easily because it was natural in him and became super successful on the other hand roger federer until the age of 12 or i mean even till 15 he played different games different games then he figured out tennis and then he became a superstar in tennis there are two ideas which i wanted to share even as career professionals if you take me as an example right so i failed i, I won't call at that period as a failure period until the age of 33 all those things which i have done during that period i went and did ground level selling um, i sold financial services i sold education i did um, i worked in call center i worked in research firms did a lot of things but it came it became meaningful at the age of 33 whatever i did so always there can be a sampling period in our career during the early stage if you are not able to figure out don't worry about that we can experiment certain things eventually that will turn out as a positive thing so generalist or specialist question so you you need to balance between the two snorkeling or scuba diving you need to explore a lot of things it's like a t shaped professional right you need to do snorkeling snorkelers usually travel wider in the sea and then scuba diving entering into one specialized area or industry and leverage uh, those skills and another important aspect the companies like nokia uh, failed because they were not able to adapt to the external conditions android was growing their core business was dying nokia was not seeing that so even for professionals it applies we need to be extremely aware of the external conditions on what trend we are traveling for which the new b mindset really works everything is changing in the external world right so what skills knowledge we can add we can devote 5 10% on this explore versus exploit another key principle if you have if you are doing really really good on something you need to exploit that make 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 more out of it do more of it don't just uh play less of yourself and if you are not doing well explore go and explore it it's a balance between exploring and exploiting so it's a very famous quote let me complete this session with this famous quote of uh, charles darwin it's not the strongest of the species that survive not the most intelligent but the one that is more responsive to change it means how we are adaptable to the external situation is very very critical in our career growth we need to always think in terms of our next curve what what trend we can leverage how there are two things i'll finish off with this we can either fit into the condition which matches our talent a company which or an industry which where our talent mix is high or we can change our talent and skill for that particular industry so two things it's it's evolution it's it's a natural principle either accept one thing and go ahead if you're not accepting it change to a different industry company we have to act on these very quickly because we don't have much of time right for which we need to have good amount of self awareness and self realization that we will get only through experience thank you so much now i think i have taken 5 uh, minutes of additional time at the end i had to rush but i am open to answer uh, your questions thank you so much mr rajesh so we have questions uh, started pouring uh, i'll just take them one by one uh, the very first one is from some anonymous attendee uh, when you've stayed at a company for a long time frame what stimulates your decision to stay longer or switch to something else even when you know that the positioning of your company in the industry is pretty well do we just consider time a factor in switching it's a, it's very contextual question right it, that the right answer is it depends we now um certain perspectives i learned one thing is are you how how you are seeing is as your career for example you are a very creative person the company is growing fast your salary is growing exceptionally but there is no foot for your creative thought inside the company your ideas are not listened to because you just need to follow the process that's it if you are not a creative person this environment will fit for you 
but if you are highly creative if you are work, willing to work in a fast paced environment even if you get a salary you will not sleep go home and sleep well something will inside you will always pinch you hey what are you doing you are not doing anything on the other hand i am not sharing is this, this this is right or wrong it's it's what's running inside you what what's your natural orientation you can stay inside a company for a very long period why not the industry and company is growing why should you stay inside a company for a very long time if you are a creative person and do not like a standard structured environment right uh roman is asking sir why diversification is risky can you please throw some more light on the same diversification is risky once you 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 are an if you are doing something for example let's let's take me as an example i am a marketing strategy brand consultant but during the early stage of my life I, I call, we call this as a sampling period right the sampling period is kind of diversification i did lot of things which are irrelevant but after a certain point of time i moved to a specialization uh in marketing branding and innovation but all those things which i did the diversification during the sampling period is helping me now but now if i diversify it will not be relevant if i start doing something on mathematics or uh, data science i understood my innate talents inherent talents now i am in an exploiting mode i am not in a diversification mode diversification is good particularly when you are in a early stage of your career you can explore uh, multiple things i we, we, you can experiment lot of things unless uh, you don't have any financial dependence on you from your family background then you exploit certain things which comes naturally to diversification is not bad but at what point of time you are diversifying that's very important and another area where diversification can be good is i'm 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 currently i'm in marketing branding and innovation what happens to marketing branding and innovation is it's a timeless uh function right it it is going to be there in next one year five year 10 15 20 but what changes inside marketing analytics technology so i need to diversify on all those things a sub factor of diversification but i'll tell you what if the entire marketing branding and innovation is irrelevant after 3 4 years i need to diversify i need to find some other skill talent and knowledge in some other industry so it, when when a when a skill knowledge or an industry totally becomes irrelevant you have no other option than to diversify correct um karthik is asking how do you keep your weak links warm and what are the possible ways to leverage them when you need a career change or such other requirement one clear principle is network outside your comfort zone uh maybe our mind is wired to network with people who are very close to us um but intentionally more that's when uh, all these social media platforms come in handy right so we can connect with people my my suggestion would be connect with people randomly just to pick their brain not just to seek their support or help um just to pick their brain and uh, uh, i'll tell you i'll share my example how i became a professional speaker uh for 5 years back i was passionate about speaking so i was working in real estate but what i did is i became a member of professional speakers association of india it's the forum called uh, psai i those people whom i have met there they have nothing to do with what i did in real estate no relevance at all but weekly uh, monthly there will be a meeting where i go and meet them network with them learn what they do how they launch their books how they deliver keynote sessions but at least one it's not an everyday affair because our our day to day life will get affected right 
so it, it happens very slowly and we need to be very deliberate and conscious about it if, if we don't do it it will never happen in our life so one month one meeting i did on professional meet speaker association of india go and listen to lot of speakers world class speakers and thought leaders that helped me to use my, i was i was already building my profession on career on marketing and branding so i used all the networking opportunities which i got in professional speakers association of india and became a professional speaker also this is one way of doing it becoming a member on a association where you have interest to build your career or profession in the future so you your your environment is very very important right the set of people whom we have i i always use this as an example if you want to learn let's say bengali i am sitting here right in chennai i can learn bengali by buying books or uh, go to a tuition center and learn this is a long process another easy way to learn is to to build friendship with four or five bengali friends meet with them with coffee they naturally speak bengali uh, so it, i it naturally comes to me right so and motivation is always overrated we we overrate motivation i'll study i'll study this course but environment plays a huge role in shifting our career so it means deliberately building connections where we aspire to become right and uh, something similar is uh, i mean we have couple of questions on networking like how to keep the professional network alive or how to use it in a perfect way so if you can uh, talk on that as well giving or uh, we can give an add value to someone in the, in the social media world giving has a lot of meaning right so if you follow someone on linkedin go and like their post comment add value to their post um, not just a generic congrats and all those things add real value uh, when when they are sharing insights you just go and share their it's today uh, building weak ties in the technology world it has become very easy i would say uh linkedin is a powerful tool to build your weak ties and occasionally send a send a um direct message to someone who you inspire get inspired write a personal message to them saying that i am i'm really um uh i i'm i'm just dreaming of becoming like you in my future how did you do this pick their one clear strategy to build powerful networks is brain picking if if you ask if i ask you suganda how 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 uh, you arrived to this position in uh, emeritus you will be more open to speak about that than if i write something like seeking help from you or directly asking something so everyone wants to share their story why not use that and build a powerful networks never ask in the beginning build meaningful connections writing something like i want i'm planning to do a career shift um can you help me or just commoditize messaging so try to add value try to pick their pick people's brain people who are extraordinary good there are always uh, we we aspire to become someone else right we need to find at least 10 15 people who are doing something extraordinarily well when compared to us and then try to build some meaningful connections with them some of the influencers in social media are high, not reachable at all so there is no point in trying and wasting your time there but some people are always accessible in social media they may devote some time for you yeah i call this principles are as traveling in the shoulders of giants we always need to tra- travel in the shoulders of giants so it's it's very easy to it is a sure shot way to accomplish what we want to become right uh praveen is asking how can one leverage on a generic profile example business operations uh, which is like jack of all trades but master of none i've shared with you certain things right so if it is business operations or business um they call it as business process reengineering so all these things are 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 powerful um, skills and knowledge so either if if you are if you are addressing too many industries you can zero in on certain industries and niches 
business operations for service and hospitality business business operations for certain industries you, you can niche it down to look uh, different if you're too broad if you're if you look too commoditized and competition is very heavy one of the marketing principles we suggest is niche it down niche it down to a particular industry uh, one question is currently more of the industries are going with diversified products to remain in the industry how different than expertise I don't get this question. Currently, more of industries. Uh, okay, I'll just ask the person to please rewrite or rephrase the question, uh, Mr. Ryan. You can read. You can read it. I'll try to sense it. Can you? Can you read it one more time? Currently, more of the industries are going with diversified products to remain in the industry. How different is that than expertise? I'll, I'll share with you certain things if I'm if I understood this question properly. If you take Amazon, they hire SEO professionals at a head level. You have head SEO, you have head social media. But if you if you uh, see a mid-size startup or a mid-size firm, you will not find a specialized role in at the head level. You will have a CMO, you will have a manager SEO or even executive SEO. So how this works inside organization is. Division of labor, we all know Adam Smith introduced a beautiful concept called division of labor, right? As the organization grows bigger, they find try to find roles for specialized, highly specialized roles. Amazon is very, very big, right? So they SEO is in, in a conventional one, one product organization, SEO search engine optimization. It's a very small function. You may even outsource it. But see, I mean, Amazon, you have a role as head SEO. So when in a small company, you may have to do multiple things. But as companies grow, have multiple products, multiple services, handling multiple industries, specialization, highly, highly specialized skills come into picture. But the question which we need to ask when we over specialize is what happens if the trend becomes irrelevant tomorrow? It's like um, you you build a Ferrari, but you cannot ride the Ferrari in the roads of in, on all the roads, right? You need you need some uh, build roads built for Ferrari. So when when we over specialize, we need to be cautious whether how long will this over specialization, the the skill which I am trying to over specialize, exist become is, is relevant in the marketplace. Right. Uh, so we take the last question of the day. Sujata is asking how to identify genius zone. It's a very tough question to ask. You need to ask within. We need to ask us. So one way to I, I'll share some uh, things. You you have to go back to your childhood days. Maybe uh, what I see if you notice in our childhood days. We did a lot of things casually, right? Um, we used to watch, see, I, I was just casually watching uh, a four, a three year, year old kid was living, uh, his, his name is uh, Pranav, he's living in the second floor. He used to wonder at everything. He used to, he used to think like a superhero. But what happens, unfortunately, as we get into societies is we become conditioned. We, 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 due to social pressure, all these social media and all these things, we become highly conditioned. One way to identify your genius role uh, zone is to become a kid. Think like a superhero. It means uh, think like you are a um, Batman or um, or a, and when, when I see this, I am very serious. Even I, I emulate. Uh, superheroes in my life. I consider as a superhero who use marketing, branding skills to change the world. It's a mental model. This this will drive you to find your genius zone. So what are your unique talents which is sitting right inside you La during 11th and 12th standard when you're studying, very good at some sports, music, 
but i've done extremely well in cultural danced um, all those things due to all those work pressures would have diminished but still you can figure out that go back and find your um, steve jobs called this as connecting the dots right this gentleman has found everything from this past and connected all those dots and invented when he, when he invented iphone he said the calligraphy course which i took during my school days helped me to build fonts for iphone you get it so shut your eyes and ears to the outside world to the society meditate and go back and see what what you have done in your whole life not just in your career not just in your career you will get your genius zone great so on that note i think we'll wrap this session up uh, thank you so much mr rajesh for this informative session i'm sure it will help a lot of our learners and uh, thanks to all the learners as well for attending the session and for your questions yeah have a Yeah thank you so much uh, Sugandha and Shivam for inviting me to share my experience I w- I know I was bit generic because I I don't want to uh, dive into specialized things because I've shared certain mental models and principles as I've told you earlier so maybe I am able to answer certain uh, questions which are very specific but I know for sure you you may have some specific questions but use these as a mental models to drive your day to day decisions so i'm sure it will help a lot of us uh, for our future career growth and uh, upskills ourselves thank you once again and thank you everyone have a pleasant weekend ahead thank you all the best my dear friends do well in your career see you later on the other side bye thank, thank you mr shrinivasan yeah bye bye